This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about whether the White House is about to ban Bitcoin mining. There's a report that just came out that's a follow-up to President Biden's original March 2022 executive order in which he said he wanted uh, some research to be done to establish sort of a regulatory background and a consistent policy towards cryptocurrencies across all the different government agencies. That one of the results of that is this report, which just came out, released September of 2022, called Climate and Energy Implications of Crypto Assets in the United States. And one of the major quotes that jumped out at me, electricity usage from digital assets is contributing to, to greenhouse gas emissions, GHG, greenhouse gas, depending on the energy intensity of the technology used, crypto assets could hinder broader efforts to achieve net zero carbon pollution consistent with U.S. climate commitments and goals. So as part of this, I wanted to ask President Biden whether they're also going to do a study of politicians' private jets, investment bankers' private jets, central bankers' private jets, to ascertain whether these are in fact consistent with U.S. climate commitments and goals. And I would also suggest a follow-up report about proxy wars that are being fought by the U.S. in Eastern Europe, in Asia, in the Middle East. Are these consistent with U.S. climate commitments and goals because these bombs seem to do they seem to produce quite a few um, carbon emissions and greenhouse gases and the other question of course would be which consensus mechanism for base layer money produces more greenhouse gases is it proof of work or proof of war here's an interesting statistic since the global war on terror began after september 11th in 2001 the u.s military has produced more than 1.2 billion metric tons of greenhouse gases. So this is something if the government's going to actually go after this and be serious, and I'm not saying that they should, I'm not saying we should not use our military, but I'm saying it's it's sort of unfair to target one part or of the uh, economy or one industry and not do, not look at everything together. So there are a lot of headlines like this, White House, Biden, uh, Bitcoin mine must be greener, or U.S. should ban it. The language uh, in the report that talks about that, there's there's some suggestions for example, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the Department of Energy should provide technical assistance to the states, to the crypto asset industry. Can you even imagine these government groups, which are very slow, they use backwards technology. U.S. government has had trouble even putting up websites for healthcare, for example. But somehow these government groups are going to provide technical assistance to this very entrepreneurial uh, new emerging ind industry, a lot of which is a scam, of course. Uh, but a lot of which is real, like Bitcoin. The suggestion is that these various government agencies should try to help the industry become greener and more carbon-free. And then if that fails, here's the key language that people are worried about. Should these measures prove ineffective at reducing impacts, in other words, carbon and environmental impacts, the administration, meaning the White House, should explore executive actions, in other words, an executive order, possibly banning Bitcoin, and Congress might consider legislation to limit or eliminate the use of high energy intensity consensus mechanisms for crypto asset mining. And this is really proof of work. The biggest proof of work mining is obviously for Bitcoin. And Ethereum, which is number two, is moving to proof of stake, which is a much less secure consensus mechanism as I talk about. So this is the worries about the ban. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask that you hit that subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment or question as well. Now, this report was not entirely negative. They, I was pleased to see that they did point out that you can use renewables for proof of work for Bitcoin mining, in particular stranded methane and vented or burnt uh, natural gas. That's a byproduct of, of some oil production and using burning these as a way of eliminating, uh, eliminating their emission into the into the atmosphere. So talking about venting, flaring both methane and natural gas. This is something we've talked about in a previous video. We talked about Vespine Energy, which uses the methane from landfill, which is just sort of sort of naturally released during the breakdown process, uses uses that for Bitcoin mining. So you can learn more about that in my video, which is very controversially titled Why Bitcoin Mining is Good for the Environment. I think it actually is quite good for the environment. I talk about Bitcoin mining using landfill methane gas and using vented or flared or stranded natural gas as well. So you can check that out. Now, I want to say that this paper, people are quite worried about it. 
I don't think it's anything to worry about, at least not yet. The White House paper, this is an exploratory paper. It's not binding. It puts out some suggestions. There's going to be a lot of debate. This is going to be a very long, slow-moving process. And we're very far away from an actual proof of work mining ban in the U.S. The other thing I would say, though, I would remind the White House that if you end up buying, banning Bitcoin mining in the U.S., what's going to happen is it's just going to move to other countries, which probably use far fewer renewables like solar and wind in their power grid. So the global impact of kicking Bitcoin mining out of the U.S. might not be what the U.S. government wants it to be. Or maybe they're just pretending that they're worried about greenhouse gases. They just don't want a competing monetary system. There are obviously different factions within the government that have different incentives and different goals. The third thing I would say is that banning something does not stop it. And this is a very obvious point to make, but it's something that the U.S. government has had a lot of trouble learning. For example, the marijuana ban since the 1930s, which was about the same time they had the ban on owning physical gold. This was very unsuccessful. And what happened is the general population uh, made it clear over over the decades that this is something they did not want banned. And eventually this federal ban is going to be lifted. It's been lifted at the state level in many different states. But it's very hard to stomp out something that people actually want, especially if it's something that's not really hurting anyone. I talk as well in this video, which I'll link to in the description notes below, about how China banned Bitcoin mining in the summer of 2021. And in spite of that, there's still a lot of Bitcoin mining going on in inside of China as measured by the hash rate. And we're not just talking about mining pools, we're talking about actual Bitcoin mining machines on the ground in China. So either the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP is doing some mining, or they're not really enforcing this ban, or, or they're unable to ban they're unable to enforce this ban. And this really tells you something when a country that is very author authoritarian, that has social credit scores, that controls movement, that does have has all these very strict controls, much which are much stricter than anything that happens in the US, even they were not able to ban proof of work Bitcoin mining. So the US would very unlikely uh, be able to, to do a, a ban or to enforce a ban. The other thing that's happening is more and more politicians. We have Cynthia Lummis in the Senate, a senator from Wyoming who owns Bitcoin, a lot of other prominent politicians talking about their Bitcoin holdings. And according to this poll, roughly 46 million Americans, 22% of the adult population, own some Bitcoin. So the more people, the more politicians, the more the general population owns Bitcoin, it's going to become impossible to do a ban like this. You'll just have a revolt at the polls or a revolt in the Senate or in the House. And the longer we wait, the more we elect younger and younger senators and congressmen and women, the more Bitcoiners we're likely to have in Congress. And so this is very important as well. The last thing I would say is that it's just not enforceable. And I can show you this. We, we already talked about how it wasn't, uh, they weren't able to really enforce this these orders in, inside of China, even with the CCP. But I'm going to show you right now that I'm going to run some SHA-256 hashes from the comfort of the home of my house. And I'm telling the White House right now, look what I'm doing. You cannot stop me. I'm going to continue to calculate SHA-256 hashes here. Basically, I'm using my computer to take an input, run it through a uh, an algorithm called SHA-256 and get an output. And I can do this again and again. I can slightly change the input here, and then I can do another hash. And I can hash as much as I want in the privacy of my own home. Lots and lots of people can be doing this. Obviously, this is not how I would actually mine Bitcoin. I would use an ASIC for it. But what ASICs do is they run the SHA-256 hash calculator and they try to find a number and output here that has a bunch of uh, a bunch of zeros and so this is not something that's really enforceable maybe they say uh, Matt you're using too much electricity uh, we suspect that you're you're doing something illegal and this is one way of course they, they stopped home grow operations with marijuana but I can always just say look I have a washer and a dryer I have a few kids uh, they have a lot of dirty clothes we have a dishwasher etc so electricity is very fungible. You can't tell if I'm using it for Bitcoin mining to run SHA-256 hashes, or I'm using it for something else. So a ban like this would be it would not be enforceable, and we would still have a lot of home miners uh, mining Bitcoin. Or what would happen is the majority of the, the large miners would move to other 
countries. And so I don't think this ban is anything to worry about. It's something to keep an eye on. It was a very ignorant paper. If you if you read through it, there are a lot of faulty assumptions. They rely on a lot of uh, bad academic research, for example, which says that Bitcoin energy usage scales with the number of transactions or the size of the transactions or the value in the transactions. None of these things are true. I've made probably 100 videos about Bitcoin's energy usage and proof of work. So I'd encourage you to check those out, especially this one about how Bitcoin mining is actually actually good for the environment. We've already spoken as well about how Bitcoin miners help to stabilize the electric grid. And I think this is another very important thing that they can do. But their real purpose, of course, is to provide this secure, global, decentralized base layer. This is not something that any country can stop. It's not something that the U.S. can stop. There will be battles ahead. Um, but just like just like marijuana, Bitcoin is completely unstoppable. And it's a very, very important technology for the world. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.